Regular meeting number two will now come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. <clears throat> This evening, Council is pleased to have Pastor Amy Aspie, lead pastor at Short North Church, to pray with us. Pastor, welcome back to Council. Let us pray. God of us all, and not just some, may our gathering this night and each night be a source of blessing for not just some in our community, but the whole community. May we seek to constantly do the hard work of understanding one another and the needs of those we serve. May we be quicker to listen than we are to speak and grant compassion to hear what is spoken beyond words, in silence, in suffering, in tears, and in laughter. Giver of wisdom, Grant us discerning minds for the decisions before us this evening and in the year ahead. Instead of problems, expand our minds to see possibilities and to never lose sight of the people who will be impacted. Guide us in discovering solutions that do not compound suffering, especially of the most vulnerable. And as we approach Martin Luther King Day, May Dr. King's prophetic dream embolden our work. May we too have the audacity to both believe and tirelessly work for a world where people everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, education and culture of their minds, and dignity, equality, and freedom for their spirits. Because injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Guide us in the ways of justice and remind us at the end of the day that there isn't an us and them. There is us. Thank you for this opportunity to serve and please bless our families as our work impacts those closest to us in countless ways. May our community be a more just, loving, and kind place because of our leadership. In the name of all that is holy, amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. In this community lost uh, a good Irishman, um, a convener, a father, a friend, uh, Mr. Mark Dempsey. Would you uh, indulge us as we take a moment of silence for Mr. Mark Dempsey? Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting. Pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12, any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass. Pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. <coughs> 
One matter of housekeeping this evening, the Council Committee assignments for 2020 will remain the same as in 2019. We will republish them in the minutes of this evening's meeting as part of the official record. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? So moved. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not this time. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Are there any resolutions by members of council? Starting with President Pro Tem. Council Member Brown. Thank you, Council President. I do have one resolution this evening. I would ask Blake Griffin from the Columbus Division of Police Hockey Team and Mr. Sean Moore from the Division of Fire Hockey Team to please approach the podium. Today I'm presenting resolution 004 2018 to recognize the first or the fifth annual first responders face off. Whereas the first responders face off is a friendly hockey game between the Columbus Division of Police and the Columbus Division of Fire. Proceeds from the first responders face off go to the Hockey Helping Heroes program that assists first responders and their families following a line, following a line of duty injury or death. And whereas the Hockey Helping Heroes program provides educational grants for children of first responders lost in the line of duty, also health and safety equipment to first responders to enhance their safety on duty, financial assistance for the first responders and their families in times of tragedy and unexpected loss, and mobility assistance for first responders impacted by life-altering disability. Whereas first responders are dedicated professionals, including emergency dispatchers, law enforcement personnel, firefighters, emergency medical service personnel, search and rescue teams, and many other heroes of the public safety, and every day our first responders risk their own safety and personal well-being in the performance of their duties, willingly serving and protecting the citizens of Columbus while eliminating potential threats to public safety and welfare. And whereas first responders are vital members of every Columbus neighborhood who selfishly serve on the front lines of the most dangerous situations and circumstances, and whose dedication is essential to maintaining safety and preserving order in times of crisis, now and therefore be resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that this council does hereby recognize the fifth annual first responders face-off and expresses its gratitude to all of the Columbus first responders for their outstanding contributions to the safety and well-being of the citizens of Columbus. And I need to point out, FIRE has won this event three out of the past four events, uh, and I'm sure that Blake is going to speak to that. Uh, if there are no comments from my colleagues, I move for adoption. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Adopted. That being stated, Blake, you have the microphone first. Thank you, uh, honorable council members. Appreciate taking the time to make this proclamation to honor and celebrate first responders in our community, not just police and fire, but all first responders. It's a, an honor and privilege to work with one of the finest law enforcement agencies in the nation. Um, and to respond, yes, at this point in time, I do believe that it's the police that hold any and all trophies in this rivalry. Uh, even though this is the fifth of the first responder face-off, this is the 20th meeting over 20 years um, that we will be uh, meeting on the ice to determine the, the victor. So as uh, the motto from the Columbus Police Hockey Team, be fire. <laughs> John? Council President, Council Members, thanks for having uh, Blake and myself up here today. And uh, I'd like to echo what he said, uh, appreciate the uh, support out on the street uh, and here this week with the first responder face-off and uh, on the ice. So, uh, yeah, as we were discussing the other day in the locker room, uh, basically wouldn't be a rivalry if we didn't let them win every once in a while. So uh, we're looking forward to this weekend and uh, have another spirited, uh, fun match and uh, celebrate our brotherhood together and uh, serving the citizens of Columbus. Thanks. Thank you. Member Dorn. Uh, thank you, Council President Arden. Uh, no resolutions this evening. Just wanted to make an announcement of my January community hours will be taking place at the MLK branch of the Columbus Library next Wednesday, January 22nd, uh, 5.30 to 7 p.m. Um, since we're on the east side, we'll be enjoying some pizza from Yellow Brick. So come on out next week and join me for a slice of pizza and let me know what's going on in your neighborhood. Thanks. That's all I have this evening. 
Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Remy. Thank you. Councilmember Tyson. Uh, yes, I do have a resolution this evening. And look at that sea of blue and white in council chambers this evening. We certainly want to recognize the other sororities that are here, but we certainly like the blue and white. And so I have resolution 15X 2020. And I'm going to ask um, uh, President Charity Martin King, as well as um, you know all the Zetas to come up to the podium, be my guest. Trying to get the whole group in, if that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Hope I can move your podium. <laughs> of course, I ask after I move it. <laughs> Tarver, good. Ushri, thank you. Okay. Madam State Director, is she close to me? Right there. Right there. Oh, right. <laughs> thank you. Okay, we're ready. Okay. Right. <laughs> this resolution is to honor and congratulate the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated on the occasion of the sorority's 100th anniversary and to thank the ladies of Zeta for their commitment and service to the residents of Columbus and Central Ohio. Whereas Zeta Phi Beta was founded on January 16, 1920 by five young women on the campus of Howard University located in Washington, D.C. And since its founding, not only has the organization raised the consciousness of its people, but it has encouraged the highest standards of scholastic achievement and fosters a greater sense of unity, ultimately improving the human condition for all and the black community specifically. Whereas Zeta Phi Beta promotes scholarship, service, sisterhood, and finer womanhood within its membership. It also actively promotes these values within the communities that it serves. Moreover, the organization has devoted countless hours of volunteer service, educating the public, assisting youth, providing scholarships, elevating organized charities, and promoting legislation supporting social and civic change. And whereas Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated has chartered hundreds of chapters and initiated thousands of women around the world, continuing to thrive and flourish while adopting the changing needs of society. The women of Zeta Phi Beta have been serving in, the Col in Columbus since September the 4th of 1943, when the Gamma Zeta Zeta chapter was organized as a graduate chapter in the city of Columbus. The organization has a diverse membership of professional women committed to serving and improving Columbus. The Gamma Zeta Zeta chapter also serves as sponsor to the Zai Gamma chapter at The Ohio State University. And um, this chapter was charted January the 27th of 1969. Whereas each of the members of Zeta are committed to a spirit of sisterly love 
Moreover, the ladies of Zeta continue to radiate the essence of finer womanhood through their obligations in Central Ohio by mentoring, encouraging, and supporting young women in the community, ultimately preparing them for a future of service and leadership. Whereas this year, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated will celebrate and observe the centennial anniversary of the sorority by celebrating the leadership and service of Zeta throughout the United States. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus, that this council does hereby honor and congratulate the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated on the occasion of its sorority's 100th anniversary and thank the ladies of Zeta for their commitment and service to the residents of Columbus and Central Ohio. Be it further resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that January the 16th of 2020 will be will be proclaimed as Zeta Day in the city of Columbus. And, <laughs> all right. And, and moreover, City Hall and downtown Columbus will be lit up in blue to honor the legacy of leadership and service that the Zeta Phi Beta continues to radiate throughout our community. I move for adoption. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Adopted. Thank you. Now, I also have three resolutions because we have three chapters that are really represented here tonight. And so I'm going to now turn over the, turn over the podium and the mic to uh, President uh, Martin to share comments, to be able to introduce. Um, yeah, I want everyone to really say their names. We, don't, we have a kind of short meeting tonight. They can say their names as well as the other presidents. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Council Member Tyson. Uh, greetings, President Harden. It's always excellent to see you, members of City Council, and of course, Council Member Priscilla Tyson. I want to thank you, first and foremost, for your leadership concerning uh, black women with your Commission on Black Girls and your exceptional uh, trailblazing forethought in that area. We thank you for that very much so. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Charity Martin King, President, Gamma Zeta Zeta Chapter here in Columbus, Ohio. Chartered September 4th, 19 what? 43. Hey! <laughs> so we are over 75 years serving the Columbus community. I also, as a show of solidarity, have invited our leadership because this is a historic occasion. Zeta Phi Beta Sorority has a number of significant firsts, one of which being the first to charter of the HB HBGLO, Historically Black Greek Letter Organization, south of the Mason-Dixon line, in addition to being in Africa and within the past couple years as far as Dubai. We represent members in the thousands, the many, the many numbers across the globe. And for us to see in our lifetime the dream of five co-eds at Howard University on January 16th, 1920 is not just an honor, it is a very surreal moment. Uh, many of our members are also already in Washington, D.C where we are doing a significant drive to support homeless uh, and displaced individuals with a lot of the things that we're doing with our Z-HOPE initiatives as well across the country and internationally. So the celebrations have already begun. I'd like to yield the microphone at this time for some introductions. As a show of solidarity, we have um, invited many of the leadership because we are not the first to reach the Centennial Club of the HBGLO, but we are certainly the finest. But at this time, had to throw it in. Um, so I'd like for uh, standing with me tonight are our brothers of Phi Beta Sigma. We are the only organization to be constitutionally bound to a fraternity. Our brothers of Phi Beta Sigma, who were chartered January 9th. 1914. So I'll ask the blue and white leadership primarily to introduce themselves and also standing with us. I am so honored and it is a privilege to have the National Pan-Hellenic Council leadership here with us as well. The presidents of those organizations, I'm going to yield to them as well to introduce themselves. Blue and white first, please, and in that order. Thank you. Good evening, I am Natasha Smith. I am the president of Sigma Iota Zeta Chapter based in Reynoldsburg, Ohio. We were chartered on June 20th, 2001 
and we are just excited to be here and have this recognition. Thank you. Good evening, Council President, Council Members. Um, on behalf of the 25th International Grand Basilisk, Valerie Hollingsworth Baker, and our Great Lakes Regional Director, Connie B. Pugh, I am EC, I am the State Director of Ohio, and I bring you greetings and much appreciation for this great honor. And I would also like to invite you to our 2020 Centennial State Celebration here in Columbus on October 30th through the 31st. So I'll be sending that out so you can see Zeta's doing work in this community. Thank you. Good evening, uh, John Merriweather. I'm the president of Beta Omer Khan Sigma chapter of the Columbus, Ohio alumni chapter. And I bring greetings from our international president, Brother Michael Crystal, a 27th, 29th international president, Dr. Carter D. Womack, who's actually in our graduate chapter our state director, who's not here today, Brother Justin Gibson. And we just celebrated our Founders Day, January 9, 1914, so we're here with them today. We didn't get to come here before that for them, but thank you very much for that. Good evening. Um, my name is Andre Harper. I'm the president of the Rokai Sigma chapter of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. We were founded two years ago. Uh, we service uh, metropolitan Columbus, uh, primarily uh, the suburban outer, out, suburban outer loop uh, communities. Uh, and so it is indeed a, a great honor to be here in solidarity, not only with our blue and white family, but all the other members of the Pan-Hellenic Council. Uh, and just to think 100 years ago, uh, two lovers were out on a stroll on the campus of Howard University, <laughs> and 100 years later, here we are standing with thousands upon thousands of members of both organizations. So uh, uh, I am just happen to be a, a South Floridian by, uh, by uh, nature. And uh, you will ask, well, why is a South Floridian? What is he doing in Columbus, Ohio? Well, 20 years ago on the campus of Florida A&M University, uh, this young, young man happened to fall in love with a young lady from Columbus, Ohio. And so uh, the rest is history, as they say. Awesome. So uh, it is indeed an honor. Thank you. Council President Hardin, Council Members, uh, thank you so much for having us here. My name is Luke Fedlam. I'm a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, founded December 4th, 1906. I'm the Vice President of Alpha Rho Lambda Chapter, and on behalf of all the Alphas around the world, we'd like to congratulate the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta on uh, joining the Centennial Club. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, my name is Essence Brian Kendrick. I'm the President of Zy the Zygama Chapter at The Ohio State University. We were Charter, January 27, 1968. And I'd just like to thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Council Member Tyson, President Harding, all of the members of City Council. We were Char Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Alpha Sigma Omega Chapter. Our sorority was founded January 15, 1908 on Howard University campus. We are the first of the Divine Nine among the ladies to be a part of the 100 Club. But I'm so glad to be here to celebrate my beautiful sisters in blue and white in both chapters and also the state director as well. We want, to we want to encourage you to continue doing the beautiful work that you're doing. And city councilmen, thank you so much. It is so important that you recognize the work of the Divine Nine. We're in different organizations, but we are one Greekdom, sister and brotherhood. And we are so proud to have Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated reach their centennial, centennial year. Continue moving, continue working, continue striving, and we are behind you all the way. Good evening, President Harden and the City Council. My name is Leisha West, and I am the president of Psi Eta Omega Chapter, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. And as Charlene mentioned, yes, um, we were founded on the campus of Howard University in 1908, and we are celebrating actually our 112 years on Wednesday. I want to congratulate the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated on their centennial celebration. And as Charlene mentioned as well, um, we continue our collaboration with all of the Divine Nine organizations and just support the community 100%. Thank you.
Council President Hardin, Council Members, uh, my name is Jeffrey Ushery. I'm the poll mark of the Columbus Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi. Uh, we were founded January 5th, 1911, so we just celebrated 109 years. On behalf of Darren Jordan, our East Central Province poll mark, and Reuben Shelton III, our Grand Poll mark, we wish the Zetas a happy 100. Um, we, as a member of the uh, National Pan Hill, um, we serve and we stand in solidarity with our other uh, Black Creek organizations, and uh, uh, we all do a lot for the city. So thank you, and thank you for having me. Good evening, President Harden to the Columbus City Council. I bring you greetings from our 40, 41st Grand Brosselis, Dr. David Marion, our 29th District Representative Lamar T. Cole. My name is Jeffrey Tarver, and I'm a member of the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated Zeta Beta Chapter. I crossed at The Ohio State University in 1980, and I try to say I'm from Pennsylvania, but I think I'm from Columbus, Ohio now. Yeah, I, like that. Uh, I, I am very honored to stand here before you. Uh, Zeta Beta Chapter was chartered in February 19, 1971, but it was in Dayton, Ohio. So we had the opportunity to move it to Columbus, Ohio uh, in 2019. And even though we were charged in 71, we're like the little brothers. And I just feel honored uh, to be here amongst the Divine Nine. We stand in solidarity. And I would state to you today that on January 16th, when Columbus turns blue, we will turn our purple into blue too. Thank you very much. Greetings, Council President Hardin and City Council. My name is Denise Johnson. I am the president of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated, Delta Omicron Sigma Chapter. We were founded November 12, 1922 at Butler University. And I just wanna welcome and congratulate, I should say, my Greek sisters of Zeta Phi Beta on their centennial year celebration. We will be with you celebrating in the coming weeks and we are very proud of you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Nakia McFuller, and I bring you greetings on behalf of my basilisk, Dr. Deandra Mall. I am a member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. I own a new Sigma chapter. We were chartered October 25th, 2002, and I'm super excited to celebrate the women of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Congratulations. Greetings, President Hardin and council members. I am James Burke, serving as president of the National Panhandlinic Council. Uh, we would like to thank y'all for this opportunity and celebrate with the wonderful sisters of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Thank you. As we draw to a close, I would be remiss not to recognize members who serve on their respective chapters, executive boards or teams, if you could raise your hands. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, I would also be remiss our members who are doves. I, one of our doves is here tonight who is 50 years or more serving in our organization. Marva Boswell, who is here tonight. Those who are part of their social action teams and committee chairs of their social action teams of your respective organizations and their chapters, if you could raise your hands as well, they are here tonight, who have done hundreds of voter registrations here in the city of Columbus, they are here. Um, in addition to that, those members that we have in our respective organizations that serve in the U.S. Armed Forces, if you could raise your hands so that we can thank you so much for your service. I think I have everyone. And I know Kendall Lee did not speak, but he is president of Omega Sci-Fi, Columbus Mu Iota chapter, who stands with us here tonight. <laughs> Um, again, thank you so much, Councilmember Priscilla Tyson, for honoring our 100 year. Thank you, President Hart and members of City Council. It is a pleasure to serve. God bless you. Again, I, ha I have your resolutions for you, and I have, okay. for, um, I have three resolutions one for um, the 
Ohio State chapter, certainly one for the Reynoldsburg chapter, and certainly yes, your chapter. And again, thank you. And what's really refreshing to see is that um, the solidarity amongst the um, all the sororities and fraternities and the great work that you're doing in our community. And again, congratulations on your 100th anniversary. And it's really, really nice to see you here and the work that you're doing in our community. Yeah. Congratulations. I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Councilmember Tyson. Are there any comments by our elected officials? Are there any requests by members of councils for the removal of an ordinance or resolution from the consent action portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading of the titles of 30-day legislation by the city clerk? Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. Will the clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation? Public Utilities Committee Ordinance is 2907-3150-2019. Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinance is 3303 and 3322-2019. The following ordinance appear on our agenda as consent action. Will the clerk now read those ordinances into the record? Resolution of Expression 3X-2020, 16X. 2020-348X-2019, 5, 6, 7, and 8X-2020. Recreation and Parks Committee, ordinances 3180-2019, 3205-2019. Public Service and Transportation Committee, ordinances 3263, 3316-3327, 3336-2019. Criminal Justice and Judiciary Committee, ordinance 3294-2019. Administration Committee, Ordinances 3, 4, and 9 2020. Health and Human Services Committee, Ordinance 3315 2019. Appointments from the Mayor's Office, numbered A0023456789. And 16 2020. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there any question or comments on the consent portion of the agenda? Seeing them, may I have a motion for approval of these items designated as consent? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Consent agenda items are passed. We will now proceed with the second reading of 30-day tabled and emergency legislation. The first committee to come before council is finance. Uh, that committee is chaired by President Pro Tem Elizabeth Brown. Thank you, Council President Harden. Tonight in finance, I have uh, resolution 001X-2020 to authorize the city auditor to request advance payments for all taxes from the Franklin, Fairfield, and Delaware County auditors during 2020 and to declare an emergency. This is an annual request made by the City of Columbus granted under the provisions of the Ohio Revised Code. Emergency action is being considered in order to process these payments as soon as possible. Any questions from colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Uh, Council President, may I move to Recreation and Parks? Please. I have Ordinance 3226-2019 to authorize the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into contract with Truco Construction Company for the Lou Berliner Park Utility Service Improvements 2019 project. project. Uh, to authorize the transfer of $767,075 within the Recreation and Parks Bond Fund to amend the 2019 Capital Improvement Budgets Ordinance 1326-2019 uh, to authorize the expenditure of $767,075 from the voted Recreation and Parks Bond Fund and to declare an emergency. Uh, this project will extend sanitary sewer service, water service, 
and electrical service to uh, fields 18 through 25 at Verliner Park. These improvements will allow the installation of semi-permanent restroom and concession facilities for eight additional fields, increasing the number of full service fields from 15 to 23. This expansion allows the park to accommodate additional large tournament events. Emergency action is being considered to begin construction as soon as possible to minimize impacts on the 2020 league and tournament schedules. Any questions from colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. And that is all I have in my committees, Council President. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the next committee to come before council is the administration committee. Public service committee, I apologize. Council member Mitch Brown uh, is uh, second chair. Council member, the floor is yours. Thank you, council president. Uh, in the absence of council member favor, I'm presenting ordinance 0024-2020 to amend the 2019 capital improvement budget to authorize the transfer of cash within the street and highways improvement non-bond fund to appropriate funds within the Federal Transportation Grants Fund, the Transportation Grants Fund, and the Street and Highway Improvement Non-Bond Fund, to authorize the Director of Public Service to enter a contract with Shelley and Sands, Inc. for the arterial street rehabilitation on Hamilton Road, I-70 to Refugee Road Project, to authorize the expenditure of up to $581,698 from the Streets and Highways Bonds Fund up to one million one hundred eleven thousand and nine hundred seven thirty-seven and sixteen cents from the street highway improvement non-bond fund, up to fifteen million two hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred ninety dollars and twenty-one cents from the federal transportation grant fund, and to up to three million three hundred thirty three hundred and forty-seven thousand five hundred forty-seven dollars and two cents from the transportation grant fund for the arterial street habilitation on Hamilton Road, I-70, the Refugee Road Project, and to declare an emergency. Uh, at this particular time, I'd like to ask Director Scott Coe, can she provide us with some addition, Deputy Director Scott Coe, additional details on this project, such as the proposed start date, will there be curbs, lights, sidewalks to be installed, and the project timeline for completion? Director? Thank you, Council Member Brown, President Hardin, and other members of Council. This project consists of safety and capacity improvements to the Hamilton Road corridor between Refugee Road and I-70. Improvements within this project include additional turn lanes, sidewalks on the east side, a shared use path on the west side, replacing of aging signal infrastructure including new mast arms, improved drainage throughout the corridor, lighting along Hamilton Road, service roads along Hamilton Road being repaired and upgraded where needed, as well as construction of curb and gutters throughout the whole length of the corridor. The project includes three locations on Morpsey's top 100 regional high crash intersections, and they will all be improved. Um, these locations are Hamilton at Refugee, Hamilton at Kingsland Avenue, Hamilton at Groves Road. And the estimated notice to proceed when we expect construction to begin is April 6, 2020. And construction should be completed um, per our estimate by May 27, 2022. If you have are any questions, please let me know. Are there any questions from my council members? Hearing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. That's all I have this evening, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The next committee to come before council is the administration committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Remy. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, President Hardin. Um, tonight, I this first ordinance will wrap up the following five ordinances in regards to our health care plans, uh, benefits package for the city of Columbus. And so first, I have ordinance number one, 2020, to take to make appropriations for the 12 months ending January 31st, 2021 for the funding of the city employee insurance programs and declare an emergency. To maintain the employee insurance programs in accordance with the negotiated labor contracts, appropriation is necessary for the continuation of all employee benefits programs. To determine the amounts necessary for the annual appropriation, 
current utilization and projected future claims were analyzed and trended on the basis of an 18-month trend of actual city utilization in conjunction with industry trends as well as actuarial services. The appropriation included 2020 budgeted amounts, employee co premium contributions, COBRA premium deposits, and prescription drug rebate deposits. I'd like to turn it over to Director Brandon to talk a little bit about the overall scope of um, the next, these next pieces of legislation. Thank you, Councilman Remy. Good evening, President Hardin, uh, members of Council. The ordinance uh, before you, again, is a request to authorize the appropriation of $213,336,240 from the Employee Benefits Trust Fund for the health insurance lines of business. This amount reflects a slight decrease from the appropriated funds in 2019. This legislation is contingent upon the passage of the 2020 operating budget. The five ordinances to follow, in addition to three ordinances on the consent agenda this evening, are contingent upon the passage of this ordinance and request the authorization to enter into contract with vendors to provide insurance coverage. Each insurance line has its own separate contract and expenditure ordinances as follows. So what you will see in the following uh, ordinances is a request to enter into contract with United Healthcare, with Delta Dental, with Vision Service Plan or VSP, with Dearborn National Life Insurance for the life insurance coverage, and uh, finally a separate contract with Dearborn National Life Insurance for the short-term disability program. Uh, we appreciate the support that we receive from council. This allows us to continue to provide uninterrupted health services to over 23,000 city employees and their eligible dependents. Uh, thank you for your favorable consideration. And if you have any questions this evening, I'll be happy to try to answer those for you. Thank you very much, Director Brandon. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Next, I have ordinance number two, 2020, to authorize the Human Resources Director to enter into a contract with United Healthcare Insurance Company and to provide all eligible employees medical, prescription, and tobacco cessation programs and eligible terminated employees with COBRA coverage from February 1st, 2020 through January 31st, 2021 to authorize the expenditure of $199,826,000 from the Employee Benefits Fund or so much thereof as may be necessary to pay the cost of said contract and to declare an emergency. In 2019, a request for a proposal in accordance with Chapter 329 of the Columbus City Code was offered for medical and prescription programs. Ten insurance companies submitted bids and after a thorough evaluation by the five-member evaluation committee, two were determined to be finalists. The evaluation committee reviewed the proposals based on the following criteria, competency, competency to perform, quality and feasibility of the off offerer's technical proposal, ability to perform the required service competently, past performance and cost structure of the proposal. Following extensive interviews and evaluation, United Healthcare Insurance Company was recommended as the medical and prescription insurance administrator. In, in addition, it was recommended that delivery of the tobacco cessation and COBRA programs would be administered more effectively and efficiently by United Healthcare Insurance Company. All recommendations were approved, and United Healthcare Insurance Company will provide services for all four programs. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harton. Pass. Next, I have ordinance number 5, 2020, to authorize the Human Resources Director to modify and extend the contract with Delta Dental Plan of Ohio, Inc. to provide all eligible employees dental insurance coverage from February 1, 2020 through January 31, 2021, to authorize the expenditure of $7,645,000 from the Employee Benefits Fund or so much thereof as may be necessary to pay the costs of said contract and to declare an emergency. Additional funding for dental insurance is necessary to ensure continuation of the city's dental insurance program. The insurance programs must be maintained in accordance with the negotiated labor contracts. The Human Resources Department requests to modify and extend this existing contract with Delta Dental Plan of Ohio, Inc. for one year and to provide funding from February 1, 2020 through January 31, 2021 for this program. Due to ongoing nego labor negotiations with collective bargaining 
contracts citywide in 2018 and subsequent major changes to the city's health care insur health insurance benefits, the Department of Human Resources decided not to engage in the request for proposal process for dental insurance in 2019. The Department of Human Resources will bid this contract out in 2020 for a start date of February 2021. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Next, I have words number six, 2020, to authorize the Human Resources Director to modify and extend the contract with Vision Service Plan to provide all eligible employees Vision Plan administration from February 1st, 2020 through January 31st, 2021 to authorize the expenditure of $1,026,000 from the Employee Benefits Fund or so much thereof as may be necessary to pay the cost of said contract and to declare an emergency. Additional funding of the Vision Insurance Program is necessary to ensure continuation of the Vision Insurance Program in accordance with the negotiated labor contracts. The Human Resources Department requests to modify and extend the existing contract with Vision Service Plan for one year and to provide for funding February 1, 2020 through January 31, 2021 for this program. The Department of Human Resources will bid the contract in 2020 for a start date of February 1, 2021. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Next, I have ordinance number seven, 2020, to authorize the Human Resources Director to modify and extend the contract with Dearborn National Life Insurance Company to provide all eligible employees life insurance coverage from February 1st, 2020 through January 31st, 2021, and to authorize the expenditure of $1 million from the Employee Benefits Fund, or so much thereof as may be necessary to pay the cost of said contract and to declare an emergency. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. And finally, I have ordinance number eight, 2020, to authorize the Human Resources Director to modify and extend the, wait a second. Yeah, that's right. Uh, to extend the contract with Dearborn National Life Insurance Company to provide all eligible employees short-term disability insurance coverage from February 1st, 2020 through January 31st, 2021, and to authorize the expenditure of $3,650,000 for the Employee Benefits Fund, or so much thereof as may be necessary to pay the costs of said contract and to declare an emergency. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Okay. Yes, Council Member Tyson. Just the comment that I would like to make is really just over on the overall on the benefits. I just want to thank um, uh, Director Brandon and her team for the work that they do on an annual basis in order to um, present this resolutions for us. Um, the uh, these benefits are so important as our you know, staff. Are, um, and, and all of us, everyone here that works for the city, they're so important um, in terms of attracting and retaining um, employees in the city of Columbus. And so I just, again, want to um, just say thank you to her team for um, working with the, um, all the different agencies to provide these benefits, to bring a package to us that we know that has been looked at is competitive. And so I just appreciate the work of your team. And again, just recognize what the importance of having these benefits for each and every one of us and our families, how important that is. So again, congratulations to you, um, Council Member Remy for leading this effort and working with the administration. I also want to certainly thank the administration, um, the finance director, Mr. Lombardi, the entire team for working together to ensure that our employees can come to work without having to be worried about um, do we have these type of benefits so that they can just focus on the residents of our community. So just thank you for your hard work. Thank you very much, Councilmember Tyson. I certainly echo those comments. It's nice to have the opportunity to pass legislation that actually is a slight decrease over last year, and certainly for all those out there in the world that understand employee benefits, that didn't happen very often. So we do applaud um, your staff and your efforts in, in making sure that we have a great plan. Um, City of Columbus is a great 
great organization to work for. We certainly are a, a benefit-rich um, government entity, but we, we want to make sure that we're doing it in a wise way, and you, you guys keep managing that very effectively. So thank you, Director Brandon. If there are no other questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you very much, and that's all I have this evening in my committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The final committee before council is the Rules and Reference Committee. I chair that committee, but I'm going to turn the floor over to Councilmember Dorans. Councilmember? Thank you, Council President Harden. Uh, tonight, in Rules and Reference, I have Ordinance Number 3221-2019 to amend the Columbus City Code Section uh, 598.03b to require all short-term rental uh, permanent applicants to submit to a background check performed by, performed by the Ohio Bureau, Bureau of Criminal Investigation, otherwise known as BCI, approved provider prior to receiving a short-term rental permit. Um, tonight, I'm going to, be, going to be asking again to move to table this legislation to, to amend um, um, the, one of the major platforms has requested more time to pro provide information regarding their background checks procedure, answer some of the some of our follow-up questions from the city. Uh, public safety remains a top concern when it comes to short-term rentals in the city of Columbus, and deciding on a thorough background check policy is one of the ways that we're actively working on to make sure that this is, this is happening. Uh, so it's important to ensure the safety of folks utilizing these rentals and making sure that we're following best practice as a city. Um, so first, I'd like to um, move to remove from the table. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Removed. Next, I'd like to move to table this legislation to our January 27th meeting. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Table. Thank you, President Harden. That's all I have this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I see no further business come for council. May I have a motion to adjourn? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Council is adjourned. We have... Regular meeting number three will now come to order. May the clerk call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. We'll now go to the zoning committee. Council member Tyson chairs that committee and all members serve one. And council member, the floor is yours. Thank you. Before beginning the zoning agenda, I'll briefly explain the rules of council as pertaining to speaking before council on, on zonings and variances. We permit three speakers on each side, three proponents, three opponents, and we ask that they limit their remarks to three minutes on each side. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we provide an opportunity for rebuttal from the applicant. On the advice of the city attorney's office, we ask that anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against any council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. I will. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. The first ordinance is zero, it, I'm sorry, is 11 2020 to grant a variance from provisions of sections 3356.03. C4 permitted uses 33309.14 height districts 3312.21 AD landscaping and screening 3312.27 parking setback line 3312.49 minimum side yard site minimum numbers of parking spaces required 3356.11 C4 district setback lines of the Columbus City Code to the property located at 3440 Oglantangy River Road to permit ground floor residential uses an existing apartment or office building with reduced development standards in the C4 commercial district. The applicant is Plaza Properties, care of attorney Jackson B. Reynolds. The proposed use is to conform an existing apartment or office building. The C department's recommendation is approval and there is no area commission. Um, I first move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Dorans, <coughs> Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you, and now move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you, the next ordinance is 16 2020 to rezone 6175 Sawmill Road being 1.50 1 acres located on the west side of Sawmill Road 1,000 feet south of Martin Road from CPD, Commercial Planned 
and Development District to CPD Commercial Plan Development District. The applicant is, is Meyer Realty Company, care of Brian Smallwood. The proposed use is fuel sales. The City Department's recommendation is approval, and the Northwest Civic Association's recommendation is seven to zero. I first move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. And if there are no, if there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. The next ordinance is 29-2020 to grant a variance from provisions of sections 3332.033 R2 residential district and 3356.03 C4 permitted uses of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 2012 Lockbourne Road to permit senior housing multi-unit residential development in the R2 residential district and C4 commercial district. The applicant is Homeport. Uh, care of attorney Laura, Laura Comack. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The city department's recommendation is approval, and the Columbus South Side Area Commission's recommendation is approval, 13 to zero. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I first move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. I now move to the next ordinance. It is 30-2020 30 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3332.03 R1 residential district of the Columbus Sea Codes for property located at 6285 um, Maple Canyon Avenue to permit multi-unit residential development in the R1 residential district. The applicant is home port care of Laura Comack. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The, C's, the city department's recommendation is approval, and the Northland Community Council's recommendation is approval 13 to zero. I know Homeport, Homeport is in council chambers this evening, and I really do appreciate your commitment to affordable housing in our community. Uh, with that, I would move to waive, if not, there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. The next ordinance is, or, is Ordinance 32-2020, uh, and it's to amend Ordinance Number 3147-2019, passed December the 16th of 2019, with a property located at 931 and 937 West Town Street to repeal Section 1 and replace it with the new Section 1, thereby reflecting the, the correct requested variances. So again, this is an ordinance amendment. The proposed use is a 10-unit apartment building. The City Department's recommendation is approval, and the Franklinton Area Commission's recommendation is approval 17 to 0. If there are no questions or comments, I first move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Harden. <clears throat> Thank you, and now I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. The next ordinance is 3323-2019 to rezone 5150 Warner Road, being 8.63 acres located on the north side of Warner Road, 480 feet west of North Hamilton Road from our rural uh, district to L LAR1 limited apartment residential district and to declare an emergency. The applicant is preferred living. It's care of attorney David Hodge. The proposed use is multi-unit residential development. The city department's recommendation is approval and the Rocky Fork Black Lick Accord implementation panel's recommendation is approval six to zero. First, I would like, if there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I want to move to amend to emergency. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. The next ordinance is 3328-2019. It is to rezone uh, 1145 Chambers Road, being 1.13 acres located on the south side of Chambers Road, uh, 900 feet east of Northwest Boulevard from the LM Limited Manufacturing District to the AR3 Apartment Residential District and to declare an emergency. The applicant is preferred living as care of attorney David Hodge. 
um, the proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The C Department's recommendation is approval, and the fifth by Northwest Commission's recommendation is approval four to zero. I, um, I do have a speaker slip, and so I would ask for a staff presentation. Good evening. Good evening. The site consists of one parcel developed with two industrial buildings and is zoned in the LM2 Limited Manufacturing District. The applicant proposes the AR3 Apartment Residential District to permit construction of a 78-unit apartment building. The site is within the boundaries of the 5th by Northwest Neighborhood Plan, which recommends mixed-use land uses at this location. The request is consistent with the established development pattern along Chambers Road and with the plan's recommendation for mixed-use development. A concurrent council variance, Ordinance 3329-2019, CV19-070, has been filed to reduce building setbacks, maneuvering, and rear yard, and to increase lot coverage, to eliminate parking lot shade trees, and to allow stacked parking and reduced parking space dimensions for a limited number of required parking spaces. Therefore, City Department's recommendation is for approval. Thank you. Um, I would now ask for a presentation or a statement from the applicant. Attorney Hodge. Uh, good evening, President Hardin, Chair Tyson, members of council, David Hodge, attorney for the applicant, Preferred Living. Um, great project here. This is really an infill redevelopment uh, over in the 5th by Northwest neighborhood. Uh, as staff mentioned, this is consistent with the land use plan. We were very successful working through the process with the 5th by Northwest Area Commission, uh, uh, earning their unanimous approval. Um, if, you, if staff wants to flip back to the zoning map, you can see this is kind of an arm of, of Columbus in the midst of uh, 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 unincorporated property. I'd love to see the remainder of this stretch of street annexed to the city and, and redevelop similarly. I think there's some uh, good chance that that may happen. Uh, great project in, a, in an emerging part of town, and uh, that's really all I've got. Uh, I'd be happy to answer uh, yeah, any questions. Are there any questions for Attorney Hodge? Seeing none, thank you. Um, we don't have any speakers for the project. Again, it was already approved by the city as well as the Fifth Bank Northwest, but we do have one speaker that is against the project, and that's Mr. Nathaniel Wilkins. Good evening, Mr. Wilkins. Good evening, 1612 Arlington Avenue, Mr. Lathan George Wilkins from the North London area. Um, I wasn't too for sure about the uh, 78 units you had up here on the slide. Um, all I know is I think this is a uh, commercial industrial property that I pulled from the website. Um, I'm in favor for this, but um, this is my first time speaking on something like this. So I just want to know the time frame with these 78 units will be built, and what are they going to be right, uh, market rate for? Uh, I know that's a big parcel of a land. I know the guy talked about housing and retail. So what is the timeline, and, and what will this look like? So if you can pull back up that slide for me, please. OK. What's your Mr. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm all done, but I am for this, not against this. I just oh. want to know what the uh, day will look like in that okay. area. Thank you well, again. Thank you very much. So, Attorney Hodge, would you please come back up to the podium and, and share the time, the timeline, and um, just, I guess, the, uh, I'm asking about, is it market rate? Uh, sure, thanks. So, in terms of the, the timeline, uh, Assuming we're successful here this evening, there is some permitting things to uh, finalize with the city, and they would then commence construction sometime in during the summer months. Uh, in terms of uh, the rents here in this, this is in an abatement neighborhood, so 20% uh, of the units here will be set for uh, at affordable rates uh, below market. Uh, think. I think it's 10% at 90% of AMI and 10% at 80% of AMI in this abatement neighborhood. Okay. Hopefully that answers your questions. Thank you. 
Just appreciate the ongoing commitment to affordable housing in our community. Absolutely. More to come. Uh, and we appreciate that. And I see uh, preferred living in the room, and we appreciate your work of making sure that we have affordable housing in all neighborhoods of our community. That is that's key. All right. Well, with that in mind, if there are no questions or comments for um, Attorney Hodge, I would like to move to amend to emergency. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, <coughs> President Harden. Amend it. Thank you. Move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. And the um, component variance to this is 3329-2019 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3312.21a, landscaping and screening, 3312.25, maneuvering, 3312.29, parking spaces, 3333.15, basis of computing air, or area, 3333.18F building line, 3333.24 rear yard of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 1145 Chambers Road to permit a multi unit residential development with reduced development standards in the AR3 apartment residential district and to declare an emergency. The applicant again is preferred living um, care of attorney David Hodge proposed use of a multi unit residential development. The C department's recommendation is approval, and the 5th by Northwest Air Commission's recommendation is approval 5 to 0. And again, if they are um, no questions or comments, I first move to amend to emergency. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Amend it. Thank you. I now move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 3330-2019 to rezone 1194 Mount Vernon Avenue, being 0.21 acres located on the north side of Mount Vernon Avenue, 90 plus feet west of North Ohio Avenue from ARLD Apartment Residential District to C3 Commercial District. The applicant is Leslie Thompson, care of attorney Ashley Ingram. The proposed use is um, commercial development. The C Department's recommendation is approval and the Near East Air Commission's recommendation is approval 9-0. If there are no questions or comments, I wish to um, waive second reading. Ms. call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Wave. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Second. Please call the row. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Horton. Pass. Thank you. And the um, variance for this project is 3331-2019 to grant a variance from the provision of sections 3312.49C, minimum numbers of parking spaces required of the Columbus City Codes for the property located at 1194 Mount Vernon Avenue to permit a parking space reduction for an eating and drinking establishment. The applicant is Leslie Thompson, again, and, um, the attorney Ashley Ingram, the proposed, proposed use is an eating and drinking establishment. The city department's recommendation is approval and the Near East Air Commission's recommendation is approval nine to zero. I now move to waive second reading. No, thank you. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Wave. Thank you and um, I move for passage. Please call the row. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. This next ordinance is 3334-2019 to rezone 511 South Hague being 2.63 acres located at the southwest corner of South Hague Avenue and Roland Sunker Place from CPD Commercial Plan Development District to CPD Commercial Plan Development District. The applicant is Adam Bates and it's care of Bruce Harris. The proposed use is the library uh, renovation and expansion. So that's exciting news for the Hilltop. The city's department's recommendation is approval and the Greater Hilltop Area Commission's recommendation is approval 1401. If there are no questions or comments regarding um, this ordinance, I would, um, ask, would like to waive second reading. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Waived. Thank you. And now I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Passed. I certainly appreciate the library, um, um, not only building new libraries, but also renovating libraries for the residents of our community. So thank you. And that concludes the um, zoning agenda. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are there any questions or comments before? Seeing no further business, may I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Meeting is adjourned.